All right, hey guys, so uh, installment two of the Arbor Arms Tradesman Pack uh, overview or deep dive or review or whatever you want to call it. Um, this is the uh, assortment of accessories uh, that Arbor Arms sent me, uh, expecting them back. Okay, so they didn't give me anything for free, they just loaned it to me um, so that I can go through uh, and show you the different configurations the pack can be in and then ultimately uh, try to figure out what's best for uh, my usage because it was uh, interest from other people in my career field that got me uh, uh, looking at this pack in the first place. Alright, so uh, what you have in front of you uh, is uh, a pretty big spread so if I get in front of the camera or something I apologize. Um, but we'll just start on the right and uh, work our way to the left and hopefully I don't miss anything as I go. Uh, the only thing that I know for sure I don't have is the uh, Breacher's Quiver. Um, I may end up buying one uh, personally because uh, I'm curious if it'll fit a uh, hot stick uh, or even a disruptor barrel without letting it slide through. I'm curious how well that would work. Uh, but even if I don't, there's a solution for that, and uh, I'll go over that with you guys as I go through this. So, uh, one of the options you have is a, uh, a 40 millimeter uh, insert and flap. So, uh, there's two Velcro backed five cell uh, 40 millimeter elastic here, which can fit front and back on that top pocket. And then you have the flap uh, that will sit in there and it has uh, both Velcro retention and side release buckle. And that side release buckle anchors to the webbing on the front of that pocket. Uh, I apologize if there's some background noise. I have a frog that lives right outside my garage and he's incredibly loud. Uh, additionally, there's this uh, three flap insert for that pocket. So if you don't want the elastic retention up there, or maybe you're not uh, carrying mags and you want something a little bit more secure, like if you got smoke grenades or thermites or something up there, the uh, three mag insert, or three flap insert fits up there. And then again, Velcro and side release uh, buckles for retention. So it's not going anywhere. Uh, this flap is also your uh, LMG flap. Uh, if you have box mags or uh, nut sacks up top, All right, you can use that to retain those. Uh, this is their uh, LMG pouch. Uh, it's three wide uh, for the columns on the back of that thing. And that plays really well with the side of the pack that doesn't have the zipper. Uh, that has Velcro retention as well as side release buckle. Uh, and uh, even if you're not using that for uh, machine gun ammunition, uh, it, it fits a canteen very well, a one quart canteen, no problem. Uh, it'll fit a Nalgene bottle, uh, and I can show you that right now. And there's still, you know, you're a little short on the webbing there, um, but I'm sure if you asked Arbor Arms uh, to get you some longer webbing on one of those, they could do that for you. Uh, but it also works well as a, uh, a pocket on the bottom of the pack to work in conjunction with those uh, side compression straps right here that fit through that laser cut tab. Uh, and that way if you've got uh, something uh, that doesn't have a flare on one end like your breaching tools might, uh, so if you wanted a spare upper or something like that, uh, you can nest it, the bottom portion in that LMG pocket, and then uh, retain the top with those compression straps. Uh, additionally, you've got a just a zippered pocket insert for the top of the pack. It doesn't have any uh, elastic on the inside of that, but if you uh, if that was something you needed, uh, you could just flip this thing inside out and sew it on. It would be real easy. Uh, there's nothing super heavy duty about it that would prevent you from doing that at home. Uh, so that would be easy to modify to whatever your uses are. There's two different variations of 40 millimeter pouches here. You have a uh, horizontal orientation and that's for running up the side of the pack. 
and then you have uh, vertical orientation here and that is for the lower portion of the pack. Right. All of these options I should say uh, would be color matched to your pack but I got them in uh, Coyote versus Multicam uh, so that they would show up better for you guys once I start putting them on the pack. You've got a, a helmet flap here or a beaver tail if you will uh, and this secures with velcro along whatever portion of the the molly on here that you would like if you want it to ride a little bit higher you can do that and then it has these uh, side release buckles that go along the top pocket and then the sides of the pack and uh, i don't know how well this is going to show up here uh, i thought it was kind of a neat little cosmetic thing but they've stitched their logo uh, into the velcro on the front of that uh, and then the back is slick but again if you wanted to customize this and put some velcro on there uh, or some pals or something like that you could absolutely do that and uh, you should be able to do that at home with a, a regular sewing machine just fine and I'm sure if you were doing a, a unit order or something like that Arbor Arms could help you out with that this contraption here is their radio insert uh, and that attaches to the the bladder retention loops uh, inside the pack so you would run this uh, on the, the inside face of the pack and then if you had to have a bladder as well that you would move that to the outside and uh, you can see this will fit a, uh, a 117 uh, without issue um, I'm, I'm not a huge radio nerd so i don't know what else is out there uh, and then you can control the depth with this webbing here uh, asip i don't know if that's still a thing uh, it'll hold that as well. And then the uh, straps, uh, if you want to use this thing as a standalone pack and not integrate it into your body armor, uh, these are the shoulder straps uh, that you can buy separately. And I will say these are, these are very well made. Uh, they seem uh, plenty padded uh, for the task at hand. Uh, the only thing I didn't see in here, and I don't know if it's in there, is a sternum strap. So I don't know if you can get that separately or not. Um, but I'll show you this thing attached so you can see how it sits on the webbing. Uh, I don't know where this shows up on their website as an option, but uh, you can use this as a tourniquet uh, retention under the uh, grommets that are... Excuse me. The grommets that are on the lower portion of this pocket. You just stick the shot cord out the bottom there and it puts a tourniquet right on the, the front face of your, your pack there, so that's pretty neat. Uh, and then, just an example of the shock to, or the, the shock cord that you can use on the bottom of the pack for making that uh, shock cord grid there so that you can uh, hang a rain jacket or something or a, a really small sleeping bag off the bottom of the pack. Uh, so that should be all of the accessories that you can get with this thing. As I go through the rest of these videos showing the different configurations and everything, you'll see them on the pack. Um, I will I will get you the, the shoulder straps here in, in just a minute as well as the uh, helmet thing and probably the radio carrier so that you can see that, especially since I don't have a 117 at my disposal to show you in the pack. We'll just knock that out now. Um, some things with the uh, the helmet thing, I'm also going to try that out eventually with uh, a Chia, see how that fits in there. Uh, you could potentially use it for one of the smaller robots. Uh, I'm not going to because I don't, I don't think it would work with anything we have, uh, but it's a, it's a, a possibility. Um, so let me go ahead and clear the table off and get those shoulder straps installed for you. All right, guys, so there is the, uh, the helmet pocket attached to the pack. Uh, you can see those Velcro tabs down there uh, attached to the front molly. The side release buckles up top, you can put those at either level. Uh, if you're going to have uh, something fairly bulky, you can drop it down and still take up enough slack. Uh, if it's something uh, pretty small like I would imagine when I try this with the Chia, uh, I'm going to need it up high so I have as much uh, uh, slack that I can take out of there as possible. And then the uh, side release buckles attached around to the sides. All right, and 
you know, depending on your load, you can you can play around with that a little bit. The sides might need to go higher or lower, um, but there's plenty of slack to take out of there as well as uh, uh, to to loosen it up for a bulkier uh, item in there. All right, um, so that is the uh, helmet pocket. Here are the uh, shoulder straps mounted up, uh, so you don't have any excess uh, hardware. Uh, everything that would be used for mounting to your plate carrier comes off, and then the shoulder straps go right in their place, so uh, it mates up really well. Uh, you can see you have a, a ton of adjustment on the top uh, for going over your body armor and whatnot. If you've got a hydration pack on your plate carrier that you need to take this over or top of, uh, there's plenty of play up top or you can suck it all the way up so that your pad uh, is basically coming out of the top of the pack. And then around the bottom, uh, you have plenty of adjustment too, um, so that you're clearing both your front and back plate uh, going over top there. All right, and like I was saying, those things feel plenty padded. Uh, the only thing you might need maybe is a sternum strap, which I don't know if Arbor Arms offers. Um, personally, I've got a, a Mystery Ranch Mystery Cinch on uh, most of my vests. So if I was using this for a, a crazy heavy load or something, I'd throw that around there for a little bit of security. All right, uh, I'll go ahead and open this thing up and show you the radio pocket now. All right, so looking at the radio pocket, uh, hopefully you guys get a decent view of this. Again, I don't have a radio, so I can't show you uh, how much of the pack that takes up, and I apologize, um, but uh, you have your, your depth uh, retention right here, and then your horizontal retention uh, terminates with a G-hook, so uh, you don't have to finagle the radio straight in. Uh, you can undo that, and it'll slide in a lot easier. Uh, and then uh, you can see the uh, what's usually a sternum strap uh, buckle there. Uh, it pops through those laser-cut holes uh, really easy uh, as long as you do it the right way if you start feeding uh, this loop end through first uh, no issues at all if you go the other way it's pretty tricky <coughs> and th again those are just mounted on the uh, hydration bladder uh, loops up top so uh, that is your your radio pocket it's all uh, laser cut and uh, really cleanly made uh, and you can see that that front portion slides on that webbing really easy so uh, if you're using this for something other than a radio which I don't know exactly what that would be uh, you don't have to worry about this thing being sized specifically for a radio and then being all uh, cockeyed on there it'll work uh, no worries and then something I neglected to mention in the first video uh, both the main pack body and the the larger pocket on there are double zippers uh, so wherever you need to access that thing, if you don't want to spill all the contents, you can have that kind of pre-stage for that. Uh, this this kind of slash pocket in the middle here, that's just one zipper, uh, but it's a pretty small pocket anyways, so uh, no big deal there. Right. So uh, those are the three, the three main accessories in my mind uh, that people would have questions on that are really integral to the pack itself. Uh, everything else moving forward is uh, role specific. So, you know, I'll show you all the grenade pa uh, pockets mounted up. I'll show you how much LMG ammo you can fit in here. Um, we'll run through 5.56 five, mags, uh, 7.62 mags. Uh, I'll try setting this thing up for uh, EOD use and uh, I'll run it through some training ops to make sure I know. Uh, that it carries uh, what I imagine it'll carry and uh, we'll really uh, work through this thing together. If anybody has any contents they want me to try in here, any configurations they're curious about, please leave me a comment and uh, I, will, I will make every effort possible to try that in here for you uh, so you know what you're getting before you go into it. Um, you know, I really appreciate Arbor Arms giving me a chance to do this and, and putting some trust in me to put out these videos. Uh, so I want to make it as good for everybody as I can. So please, please, please let me know if you got any questions 
and uh, we'll work through it together. Thanks.